if you go to the court then also there will be a question whether you are a money lender whether you are doing this thing whether you have paid that money as per the rules and all there will be a lot of questions to you and it will take lot of lots of time mediation is not a litigation and a mediator is not a judge there is no binding effect a grieved party can challenge the orders of the arbitrator under section 34 of arbitration conciliation act and the courts are having the right to hear on the appeal हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ द डी एन एल यू पॉडकास्ट आई एम भास्कर उपाध्याय थर्ड ईयर लॉ स्टूडेंट एट डी एन एल यू टूडे वी हैव विद अस प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर शैलेश एन हेडली सर हु इज़ द वाइस चांसलर इंटर इन चार्ज एंड रेस्टार ऑफ डी एन एल यू सर हैज़ कम्पलीटेड इज बी एल एल बी इन नाइनटीन नाइनटी नाइन एंड एल एल एम विद डूअल स्पेशलाइजेशन इन द ईयर टू थाउजेंड एंड वन आफ्टर दैट सर परस्यूड इज पी एच डी फ्रॉम Sir has also practiced at various courts at Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, and Tamil Nadu. And sir has also acted as sole arbitrator. During his practice, he has decided more than 800 cases. Sir was a director at School of Law Presidency University and Chandigarh University, Mohali. Sir was also dean of LPU University. Further, in 2022, sir was elected as professor of Dharmshala National Law University, Jabalpur. So, sir, for our audiences, if you can start with like what is mediation and how would you describe its role in conflict resolution? Yes. See, mediation is not a new concept. We all know in the early days there were elders who used to intervene and uh, settle the dispute among the family matters, or there were panchayats which used to sit and resolve the disputes. It is an advanced version of the same thing. As the saying is there. the history repeats mediation is a kind of a thing again in the same manner it is repeating and coming back mediation is a thing wherein a dispute can be resolved by a third neutral person and it is an nothing else but a amicable situation a solution to a problem existing problem and it is a kind of alternate dispute resolution because for a small thing the parties goes to the court and they fight it for uh, fight it on for a long period of time but mediation is uh, such a thing that wherein two parties are there a particular mediator will be there the neutral person will be there he will try to negotiate between both the parties and to bring a solution to the existing problem so the mediation plays a very important role in the present era and the government of india this year itself has passed an act that is called as the indian mediation act which also speaks about the same thing earlier mediation was a part but it was not having the statutory power now the statutory power has also been granted it consists of 63 sections it speaks about the normal mediation institutional mediation the pre litigation mediation and online mediation and it lays down the entire procedure how it can be done what it can be done how it should be done what is the validity of the thing if the parties are not agreeing what has to be done by the mediator and it is totally a different from the arbitration and the court proceedings sir as you mentioned pre litigation mediation can you explain <coughs> how it is effective measure for resolving disputes yes see there are the every litigation a uh, concept when it comes with regarding to the litigation litigation means the dispute there can be a, a, a dis- there, if there is a dispute there will be a solution and for that the parties are going to the courts and various forms but the term itself pre litigation pre litigation means before the litigation before there is any dispute any kind of anticipation of a dispute and the a solution is found that is a pre litigation see the thing is uh, normally what happens there are uh, now we are having the era of mobile mobiles and the, the there are so many companies which are there and if there is so many dues of a smaller meager amount and if the everyone goes to the court to file a case there will be lots and lots of cases and if an opportunity is given 
to the parties that this is the outstanding balance you come and clear and we we are ready open to have a discussion on that and then we will settle the dispute a notice goes to the opposite party and the opposite party comes to the table they negotiate and they come to a solution for example if a company charges 5000 rupees as the claim amount and the party comes and says no i i, I am not bound to pay 5000 i am bound to pay 3000 rupees then the company says okay you pay 4000 we'll close it the party says oh, 3500 and there will be a negotiation sort of a thing and at the same time the uh, issue is resolved that is a pre litigation but again a pre mediation is a totally a different kind of a situation wherein that uh, in a pre mediation or litigation this this is a place where the neutral party comes into the picture and tries to settle down the entire issue so the uh, pre litigation and post litigation are two different thing post litigation was the case is filed and the resolution comes from the court pre litigation before filing the case the resolution is there with the parties also sir uh, can you please point out some key differences between mediation arbitration and litigation oh, see uh, as you said first one we go to the litigation <coughs> litigation is a thing which is been prescribed by the courts and the parties to resolve it file a case in the court there is a procedure which has to be followed strictly adherence to that has to be done and there are there is a lot of things involved into it second thing arbitration because in this present busy world the parties don't have the time and they cannot go in the peak hours to the courts as a result of which their business is hampered and for that particular thing an arbitration a parallel body of the court is a kind of an arbitration in if in any agreement there is an arbitration clause so the courts are also barred to take that particular case when there is a provision of arbitration arbitration is almost all similar to that of the court proceedings the only thing in the arbitration is the adjudicating body the judge is a neutral person and he acts as a judge judge and then he decides on the basis of merit no doubt he doesn't follow the entire procedure of the cpc but he has to follow almost all all the procedures but there is a liberty and there is a specific place the parties have to come they have to ma- make an application the written statement has to be filed the evidence has to be laid and argument has to be made and then come to a conclusion now come to come to the mediation part mediation is not a litigation and a mediator is not a judge mediator is an assistance provided by a particular person mediator to both the parties if there is a dispute he has to analyze the dispute and then he has to come out with a solution i'll give you an example suppose there are two parties one claims that he is entitled to get 1 lakh rupee the other party says no he is he is born to pay 50000 rupees the claim by the first party says that with interest and additional interest and other charges by issuing a notice hiring a advocate this all particular things have erupted up to 1 lakh rupees come to 1 lakh rupees but the other party says to 50000 and the matter goes before their arbitrator the first arbitrator what he will do he will listen both the parties separately then call them jointly and then discuss the matter before them jointly they will be standing on their own points then again the arbitrator will tell one of the parties to move out then he will speak the pros and cons of both the situation suppose you will say that person is there with the 50000 and you are asking for 1 lakh rupee if you go to the court then also there will be a question whether you are a money lender whether you are doing this thing whether you have paid that money as per the rules and all there will be a lot of questions to you and it will take lot of lots of time so it is better to so resolve that particular thing in a mid way out if you agree i will speak to the other party and then come to a conclusion and uh, then he will give some time for the first person to think on that and he will be sent out the other person will be called inside then this person will then the mediator will speak to this person see you have taken this much of money 
you are bound by that particular agreement as per the agreement there is a provision of delay charges there is a provision of this particular thing there is a provision of this thing if that person goes to the court you will be having you will be liable to pay 1 lakh rupee and how the how much the long the court takes time you have to repay the money with interest so if you agree i will negotiate with the other person and come to a conclusion wherein you, you will not be liable to pay 1 lakh rupee and you will be saving some time money and these things then you go and think and then you decide on that particular thing then you will send back that person also call the first person inside and he will say okay i, I will be discussing i will try to convince the other party for 75000 rupees and he will try to test the pulse of the other person then that person mind will might have changed and thinking that okay what are this loss which i will be occurring if they file a case and i am not a pawn broker or licensee to lend the money how can i charge the interest and everything then he say okay 75000 then he will be sent out that person comes that particular same 75000 then he ca- calls both the parties together and when both the parties come together then he will say okay i propose 75000 rupees to be paid and you way of 25000 you pay additional 25000 so in that particular situation both the parties are benefiting with 25000 so here the mediator has done his work by mediating between both the parties and he is the person for both in the arbitration a person arbitrator is a person who sits and decides on the matter which is presented before him just similar to that of the court and what are the materials on record based on the evidence produced the decision is given but here it is a collective decision of the three parties in the mediation but there it is different and this is different and court altogether we know it is totally a different wherein we have to follow the cpc uh, provisions evidence and everything in a strict sense but in arbitration liberty is there time liberty is there and in mediation it is totally different thing altogether so sir uh, what are the binding effects of the decisions between mediation and arbitration see binding effect uh, when it comes to uh, with regarding to the arbitration there is no binding effect a grieved party can challenge the orders of the arbitrator under section 34 of arbitration conciliation act and the courts are having the right to hear on the appeal with regarding to the mediation mediation is a process wherein any party agrees to the terms and conditions they will re- reduce it into writing and there is a in the new act which has come this year there is a provision of registration of that particular agreement once that registration is made it becomes binding it there is no force there is nothing it is the mutual understanding of the both the parties just it is not like the lok adalat only on 3 to 4 grounds this particular mediation agreement is not valid if that particular agreement has been done with coercion fraud misrepresentation or that particular things cannot be done as per the mediation except this for the order passed by the mediation it is not a, it cannot be called as an order the agreement arrived by the parties both the parties is a decision which cannot be overruled and it cannot be challenged so, so what is the cost effectiveness of mediation when compared to other conflict resolution methods the cost effectiveness is that in every kind of a litigation both the parties have to hire their own uh, party their own people advocates whether it's a court proceedings they have to hire their own counsels in case of an arbitration they have to hire their own counsels there is a two way expenditure which has to be made but in case of a mediation there is only one person who is trying to mediate between both the parties so there is no much cost involved into it and this particular cost is an agreed amount by both the parties in case of a litigation the court decides what is the amount of fees in case of an arbitration the court if the arbitrator is appointed by the court the court decides the fees in case of uh, the both the parties are 
uh, agreeing they are deciding the fees and apart from the arbitrator fees they have to pay the counsel fees also in case of mediation it is a just a one person who mediates and uh, if this mediation is being done through the court uh, through the, the proper channel there won't be any cost and if it is done the uh, pre, pre mediation that is before going to any of the courts if the parties themselves agreed up, agrees and they go with before a mediator that is the institutional mediation then that will be decided by the parties themselves so it will be not uh, much as that of the other litiga uh, other litigation cost involved in other litigation it will be lower than that of the things so it is cost effective Sir, you also mentioned about Lok Adalat. So, can you explain what is Lok See, Adalat? See, Lok Adalat is a kind of a thing wherein it is also a kind of negotiation for the settlement of dispute. There are two Lok Adalats, uh, pre-litigation and post-litigation. As I have already told, pre-litigation is before going to the litigation and post-litigation. Once the matter is before the court, they refer the matter to the me uh, adalat lok adalat so lok adalat is a way of settling the dispute on immediate basis and in the lok adalat there is no appeal lok adalat says that whatever is the decision which is written down and signed by both the parties that will be binding. binding and if a matter is there which is compoundable in nature that can be dealt by the lok adalat so there is no uh, hard and fast rule there is no pressure that this has to be agreed because many of the cases now the courts have uh, taken uh, very oftenly they are conducting lok adalat monthly yearly and they call as a maha lok adalat or pan india on a one particular day they conduct this lok adalat and where the judicial officers are of the opinion that this matter can be settled it is a very small issue and the, this particular matter can be settled before the lok Adalat. so they refer the matter to the Lok Adalat and in the Lok Adalat if it is settled so it is having a binding force on both the parties it is non-appealable in other cases if a decision is given by the court that is appealable on one or the other ground so in Lok Adalat both the parties are having the win-win situation so sir uh, moving to another question how do these alternative dispute resolution mechanisms contribute in reducing the backlog of cases in the Indian judiciary See, because now we see that there are so many courts and each court is overburdened. If you look into the cause list of the civil courts or the junior division courts, there are there will be more than 80 to 90 cases listed. In some cases, 150 cases will be listed. And he, the judicial officer is also a human being. How a person can hear 150 cases in a particular day? And there are so many cases are being filed. So, to get a justice, it takes years together. So, if these are the ways, alternate dispute resolution is a way wherein these particular disputes can be settled out of the courts. And this will reduce the litigation. As a result of which, the courts will not be burdened as they are burdened as of now. And the court can dispense of the cases on the early basis. So these particular things are the, the only way out to reduce the litigation in the courts and the alternate dispute resolution is the future resolutions and arbitration mediations are the next the future we can see that uh, the, the most of the cases will be tried to be settled through the mediations only. Okay, so sir, how would you address a situation where mediation does not result in resolution of the conflict? See. Mediation, as I told you, it is the intervention of a person enlightening the, both the parties, the pros and cons of the case. There is no hard and fast rule that the media, when a matter is uh, sent to the mediation, it has to be resolved. So in this particular situation, if there is no agreement or no consensus, ad, uh, consensus adidam is there, then it has to be reduced in writing why that consensus is not there. What is the reason behind it? And then the matter will be left there only and from where the matter was referred to here, this will go back to the same position. I suppose if the matter is forwarded from the court to the mediation. So if this resolution is not done, so it will go back to the court again. And the proceeding will start there. 
as a look that there was no magnation. And the big indication is the mattress of the Lord. So it will go by. So as it will be, it will be considered as nothing has happened. So if the parties agree and the mediator is successful in mediating both the parties, then only the mediation plays an important role. Sir, how do you handle cultural and language differences when mediating in diverse or cross cultural settings? Uh, this particular thing, that's why they say mediation is a neutral person's uh, decision wherein there is a flexibility of language. Flexibility of the language, if you go to the court, we have to go with the vernacular language or the normal language that is English. Suppose in Madhya Pradesh, we can argue either in Hindi or English. If a litigant is from South India, if he comes to the Madhya Pradesh, he is not familiar with the Hindi, then it becomes a very difficult task. He is not knowing uh, Hindi properly, not knowing English properly, it becomes difficult. But in case of a mediation, the language is not at all a concern. If the mediator is well aware about the language, which both the parties know, he can negotiate in any of the language. So the culture and the language is not a barrier in case of the litigation. And the same thing is with arbitration also. But this particular thing will be a problem in the courts. Because the judicial officers will not be knowing the vernacular language of the parties. So here the language and the culture is not a barrier. It is a freehand uh, negotiation. The main intention of a mediation is to resolve the dispute amicably with the consent of both the parties. So moving to our next question. What role does confidentiality play in the process of mediation? See, the confidentiality is one of the part and it is the duty of the mediator to protect the uh, confidentiality of the things. If it is so confidential and it has to be kept confidential, he cannot disclose this particular things. And most of the cases, uh, the confidential matters, the first only it will be discussed and then it will be protected. So here there is uh, nothing with regarding to that of the documentation to be filed or any kind of a thing as that of the case of the court cases and arbitration. It is just a negotiation. So it is the, the uh, moral duty of the mediator to protect the confidentiality and not to disclose about this particular thing whether the matter is resolved or not. Only the outcome of that particular things has to be written and it has to be circulated. Yes, sir. So thank you so much for thank you. your valuable time and we'll be back soon with our next episode of DNLU podcast. Thank you. Okay.